is my dream. Liberty sows its seed at Far Point Farms. Hey guys, it's Eric owner of Far Point Farms here in the mountains, North Carolina. Tonight, another part of the emergency preparedness series. This one, uh, you know, last year I did all the work on solar system here for the house, which has worked out really well. This year I've been producing a couple videos just talking about what it's been like to live with that system for a year. But I wanted to talk about people who don't want to go that big, you know. Um, I know several of you commented it would be nice to have something kind of like this for backup for a ham shack. In fact, I was uh, off last weekend talking with uh, a fellow YouTuber, well, a fan of the channel anyway, and he was talking about how he uses solar to run just his ham shack. So that's kind of what I want to talk about tonight. Look at this. I've got uh, just a few items here in front of me, and I'm going to talk about costs, how easy it is to set something like this up, and how you could have an emergency backup power system for communication, for running uh, you know, a CPAP machine, whatever it is that you need. Within reason, uh, these things actually can outperform a similarly sized generator. I'm going to talk about, if you were going to compare price-wise here, the little generators that I'm talking about, those little tailgater generators, about $100, $119 at Harbor Freight. Great little generators for what they are. They're two-stroke. They have a decent run time, but again, they have all the downsides. They've got gas. You're going to run out of gas eventually. you got uh, two-stroke oil. If you forget it, you're blowing that thing up, and they're noisy. They just, they're, they're loud machines, so if you're not trying to you know, bring a lot of attention to what's going on at your place, you might not want to have something like that. In this setup, and let's just go ahead and get into it here, I'm going to show you that for about $100 to $150, you can have a setup like this. In fact, what I have right here costs less than $125. This panel right here is a 100-watt solar panel. There are a lot of solar panels out there. They're flexible ones. There are a Harbor Freight sells their uh, a kit, and it's about $150. I'm not recommending that, actually. And I'm a huge Harbor Freight fan, but for this instance, you can build a better system uh, that's the same price or actually a little cheaper using you know parts from everywhere. This panel right here is HST, I think, uh, HSQT or something like that. doesn't matter. There are about four different brands that make these. They're all nearly identical. When I was ordering the ones for my system, I got some from one place, some from another. They're all compatible. This is a 100-watt solar panel, and I'm going to tell you right now, I recommend if you're going to go through the effort of setting up a system, a small system, and something that's still movable if you need it to be, Go with 100 watts to start with. You can always daisy chain these or add voltage or, or amperage to it uh, by daisy chaining them later on down the line. But a 100 watt panel is a good size. It's not heavy. It's easy to move around and it's stout. It just works well. So I paid $71 with free shipping for this unit right here. So we're up to $71. This thing will operate in pretty much any sunlight, even puts out wattage under light bulbs. So it's going to give you some power in a variety of conditions. If it's not, you know, as long as you can get the snow off of it in the wintertime, you're good to go. Will it produce a full 100 watts? Probably never in its entire lifespan. Expect about 80% efficiency on any given day. So to get 80 watts out of this is pretty good. In a bad condition, cloudy, whatever, 45 to 50 watts, and you're going to see that it's still going to be plenty for what we're going to set up here. The next thing you're going to need, and this is where people think, I thought, when I got into the system, was that this was going to be the expensive part of the setup and it turns out it's not in this little box which cost me seven dollars and 88 cents with free shipping is a solar charge controller here it is right here and i'll get it close up we'll kind of go over the features and functions this one has usb charging out so right out of this panel i have the ability to charge uh, you know cell phone or walkie talkies or whatever using usb we have our screen here that allows us to set our amperage, shows us our incoming wattage and voltage. And then down here on the bottom, you can see this is where our wires go in. And what we're going to have is two wires that are going to come in from the solar panel, or multiple solar panels chained together. Two wires that are going to go out as a feeder to an inverter, if you want to invert that power and go from 12 volts uh, DC to 120 volts AC. And then the last two is direct 12 volt out. It's regulated 12 volts. So I'm going to hook ham radio equipment directly to the sun. You can do it with this, although, you know, if it's a cloudy day where the power is fluctuating up and down, might not be the greatest idea. But you can use it to run LED lights, to run, you know, a variety of 12-volt equipment. In fact, what I did with the one that I had installed in my car for this big road trip I took this past summer is I had those two running to my little thermo cooler, and that ran it all day. And then at night, I plugged it into a battery pack and ran it off of that. So there you go, $7.88 with free shipping. 
we're uh, now right at about what 80 bucks right $80 so far that's not bad so we're, we're doing real well now some of this stuff you may end up having to pay a little bit more for than I did but if you keep your eyes out and you keep your ears out uh, you might come out with those great deals this actually sits in a uh, EMP box of mine I just took it out for this video so I have a couple of these things and I've wrapped them up put them into a metal Faraday cage in case the worst happens and let's hope that it doesn't next is the inverter now these inverters are available on eBay or Amazon or other sites online they're also available at Harbor Freight in a variety of sizes for a hundred watt panel let's not get carried away this is a 400 watt I think it's 800 watt surge yeah 800 watt peak capacity or surge capacity 400 watt this as you can see is pretty well used right it's it's worn this I picked up used at a flea market and I paid five bucks for it brand new I believe these go for thirty five dollars for this size so if you bought it new yes you'd click you'd be uh, over a hundred and ten dollars hundred and fifteen dollars at this point if you can find one of these things used on eBay or find one that's you know from overseas with cheap uh, free shipping and you know maybe the same or similar output not a bad deal right so this is going to go and you can hook that to uh, directly to your 12 volt solar charge controller although again with the fluctuations the in and out that's not going to work very well so you really need one last piece and this is where i'm going to show you this here now behind me here i also got this i'll show if you were going to remote mount this if you were just going to set this up for like camp use all this is going to be close enough you don't need extra cabling but you could also get you know maybe 10 bucks worth of extension cables to run from the solar so you could have that solar someplace where it's in all good sun and run it down this garage right here that i'm standing in there is a solar 100 watt panel that's been over there since the day i moved in or the week i moved in i put it up it runs and charges a battery I'm using a setup just like this and it's been there ever since so it does have extension cables on it but it doesn't need to have that the last thing is this this is an ac delco car battery and you know that's not exactly ideal for solar use you want to try to get something called a deep cell battery or even better you want to get a lithium battery a lithium battery is going to cost you a fortune in fact a lithium battery this size is close to a thousand dollars no kidding that was the biggest shock to my system when i went to build a larger you know house run system but you don't have to do that. There are other guys on YouTube that have made some videos covering this as well. This was actually a core charge that I decided to keep. Has about, well, when I took it out of service, it had 60% of its capacity left. Right now it's at about 40, but that's okay. It literally was $8 to hang on to this as opposed to turning it in and when I bought a new battery for my car. So you can use automotive batteries. Are they going to last as long in a crisis? Are they going to last as long if you're charging and discharging? No, they're not going to. I would recommend saving up and buying a deep cell battery. But maybe you've got a camper. Maybe you've got a boat. Maybe you've got a trolling motor set up that already has a deep cell on your property that you can use. In a pinch, however, if you just had the rest of this stuff and you had a power outage, you could always take the batteries out of your car or cars and stack them up and you would have a lot of reserve capacity so that's how you build a system cheap what you're looking at here seventy one dollars seven dollars and eighty eight cents i think this was either five or ten dollars you know so ninety bucks and less than a hundred with my eight dollar core charge less than a hundred you add the cables in you're at about a hundred and ten boom there's your hundred watt solar system setup that gives you everything recently i've reviewed two products the uh Oops, I think it is. It's like got a solar charge controller, a lithium battery, an inverter, all that stuff. Great setup. Still got to add a solar panel and not cheap. Not a bad deal. Uh, really good unit. I'm not bashing it or the gear test that I reviewed before. I think they're both great products. But for those who can't afford that but are like, man, I sure would like to have something like that in case of an emergency, there are cheaper ways to do it. It's not going to be compact. It may not be as pretty. But it'll get the job done and i've used this setup in fact this exact setup except this is not the one that i use because it's still attached to the wall but this inverter gets used this battery gets used the cables uh don't get used for this project but it has cables for a 100 watt solar panel that sits up on the roof this 100 watt panel is going on another building and i'm going to actually use this and order another one to put back in the box to charge this battery to run the system so all this stuff is is pretty easy to get into 
Now, what can you run off of this 400 watts? I mean, if you're gonna run during the daytime, you can run an 80 watt load and probably not charge the battery, but not run down anything, right? It's just gonna be kind of a net neutral. So if you only needed it for daytime operation, you could run it as long as there's sunlight at 80 watts, give or take, right? We're real close to 80 watts. If you wanted to run something at a higher wattage, well, then you can't run it all the time. And that's where solar gets kind of interesting. You let it sit and charge for the first four hours of the day and you've got, you know, half charge on this battery. And now you have the reserve capacity to run something 400 watts for say 40 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever it is, and so on and so forth. So that's the way you kind of manage it. And there's guys out there that have done all the math and, and you can check their videos out. But a rule of thumb is for every two hours of sunlight here, you put about 25% charge into here, at least here on my property in my location. I guess that'll do it for tonight. I did want to make this video. A lot of stuff going on in the world. Always good to be prepared. And so having a setup like this uh, at your house, your apartment, wherever you may be, probably not a bad idea. I'll see you next time, my friends. Take care.